of all the manufacturers in the entire history of the Borderlands universe, Malawan is arguably the strongest of them all. So let's break down the top 10 best Malawan weapons in Borderlands history. And number 10 is... Starting us off with Borderlands 1 content is the Hellfire. This SMG remains one of the most talked about weapons from that first installment of the franchise. A high fire rate beast that outputs some crazy elemental damage. This gun is so good that I mistakenly used footage of it for the double anarchy in my top 10 Torg weapons video and only a few people seem to notice. Yeah, that's my bad. The Hellfire made a return in Borderlands 2 and in the pre-sequel where it continued to be an amazing Malo 1 weapon. And then there's Borderlands 3 where for some reason the developers decided Decided to make the Hellfire a doll SMG. Had they left it alone as its proper manufacturer of Malawan, then it could have potentially been one of the best SMGs in that game. Now let's see number nine. At number nine, we have the Crit from Borderlands 3. Obtainable by tipping Moxie in Sanctuary, the Crit is one of the best SMGs in that game, but like a lot of things in that game, it was not good at launch. But in February of 2021, Gearbox buffed this gun by a staggering 540%. At the same time, they also increased the lifesteal ability on this gun from 5% up to 8%, and they lowered your chance to drop this thing on reload from 12.5% down to just 5%. The gimmick to this gun lies in the Red text slippery when wet when you reload you have a chance to drop the gun which can be quite the trade-off when you're in an intense fight but this gun does crazy damage and it heals you extremely well being a moxie weapon and all and with it being so easy to obtain from the very first time you enter sanctuary all the way through all of your mayhem levels this makes this a very powerful on level weapon at all times to help you get through the tougher content number eight Coming in at number 8 is the Ember's Purge. Introduced in the Handsome Jackpot DLC in Borderlands 3, this SMG is what the Hellfire could have been in Borderlands 3. Great elemental damage, good fire rate, beautiful custom skin design, but where this gun really shines is when you use it on ground-based enemies. When you hit enemies with the Ember's Purge, a puddle of molten fire spawns at their feet and well it melts them at launch this gun was mid at best but on december 17th 2020 they buffed the lava pool damage significantly turning this gun into an absolute beast there is one slight problem however you can only get this gun once per character it is tied to the embers challenges in the handsome jackpot dlc and when you complete the very last of the embers challenges you get one sent to you in the mail and you can't choose the parts or anything you're just stuck with it now you can get to that final embers challenge and if you're on pc you can save and quit and set your game to read only or if you're on console you can do a cloud save farm but hopefully gearbox sees the hoops that we jump through like this to get specific mission rewards and they add a better option to get those in borderlands 4. number seven Sliding in at number seven is the complex route. This sniper is insane. Honestly, pretty much everything on this list could be top three of this list situationally. And this gun is absolutely no exception to that. It's dropped by Lanny Dixon in the Bounty of Blood DLC on the map Ashfall Peaks. The complex route has the ability to obliterate entire screens of enemies in a single shot. When you shoot this gun, the shot spawns 13 additional bullets, which will split out in multiple directions. Those bullets explode on impact dealing weapon element splash damage but beware equipping anything that boosts your area of effect damage or your splash damage radius will absolutely nuke you well and everything else it can also be quite blinding so be careful especially if flashing lights cause you issues and now for number six and number six is the flipper one of my favorite weapons in the entire franchise the flipper is basically the sandhawk from borderlands 2 but you don't need near perfect parts for this one to be good any flipper is a great flipper and the god roll version of this only improves it marginally so no need to stress over that it comes in all elemental options and it always has two different elements on it while the sandhawk in borderlands 2 shot out eight slow moving bullets that flew like a hawk flapping its wings the flipper is laser accurate and will start with one bullet then three then five then seven all the way up to nine just by holding down the trigger now obviously that means on mose you can basically keep the nine shots sustained for quite some time making this a beast of a boss killer especially Especially when paired with her Minesweeper class mod. But this gun is fun as hell on all the Vault Hunters too. The flipper drops from Minasaur in Blood Sun Canyon in the Bounty of Blood DLC, which is DLC 3, or from the True Trials Arbalist of Discipline boss in the base game. But be aware, you will need to own the third DLC in order to equip it. Number 5! 
And number five is the grog nozzle now truth be told i would personally rank this a little bit lower myself but i know that the fandom loves the grog and rightfully so this gun is less about the damage and more about keeping you alive in ultimate vault hunter mode on borderlands 2. obtainable from the beard makes the man in the assault on dragon keep dlc the grog is the active mission item and will change parts every time you save and quit but whatever you do do not finish the beard makes the man mission or you will lose this mission item basically just accept the mission you have the grog now never complete the mission featuring a 400 crit damage bonus and the ability to do 65 of damage dealt as lifesteal and that's all damage dealt whether you're hitting with an action skill with a lightning grenade with a gun it doesn't matter at 65 of damage dealt you get back as lifesteal the grog is absolutely the most overpowered healing item in the history of borderlands the grog will also occasionally trigger a drunk effect allowing you to shoot an extra five projectiles at a drastically reduced fire rate while your camera sways giving the impression of what it's like to be drunk use that to swap to a top nia or norfleet to do some crazy damage and number four is the free radical from borderlands 3. now this pistol is wild it shoots shock energy orbs that deal shock splash damage and each time your shot hits it will spawn a homing bullet that homes back in on the target that you hit those homing projectiles do not deal splash damage however but you can output a lot of shots on enemies fairly quickly with this thing and it creates kind of a mesmerizing effect of projectiles just flying around hitting the same enemy over and over and it destroys everything that you hit in some ways this feels a lot like you're shooting a rocket launcher in pistol form mostly because the base damage of this gun is actually higher than several legendary launchers in borderlands 3. it's also insanely easy to obtain dropping at 30 percent drop rate from beef pliskin in karas canyon in the director's cut dlc and that's part of the ava murder mysteries quest line number three and number three is probably the easiest item on this list to obtain the pimpernel this blue rarity unique sniper rifle is a mission reward for completing don't copy that floppy in the captain scarlet dlc in borderlands 2. if you're fast and efficient that mission only takes two or three minutes and just like that you now have one of the strongest weapons in the game what makes the pimpernel so good is that when you shoot it the projectile will hit and then split into five more projectiles that move up and away from the original hit spot often hitting two more times times each as they fly up and out ideally this means shooting an enemy in the crotch will also hit them multiple times in the torso the pimpernel is one of the rare weapons that doesn't feel like it needs the damage boost of a b shield like the sandhawk does for example it just works and it works great on every character it's one of those rare mission rewards that i have to get on each borderlands 2 playthrough no matter what now be aware that zero and maya can mess up the split of the shots by using skills that increase projectile speed number two next up at number two is the norfleet and i have a feeling this one's probably going to be a little bit of a surprise to some of you guys who expected this thing to be number one but i have my reasons first of all the norfleet is ridiculously hard to farm it only drops from hyperius or vermivorous both are raid bosses and most players can't solo them heck most can't even get vermivorous to spawn without a full team of four and even then it's really hard to get them to spawn and even if you do somehow get vermi to spawn they only have a 20 percent chance to drop the norfleet even worse is that they drop a Norfleet that rolls with just a one-shot mag. I mean, it's still good and strong, but honestly, you're better off just using an E-Tech launcher like the Topney at that point. Now, if you're a zero main, Hyperius is a cakewalk, but even if you can kill him fast, his drop rate for a Norfleet is only 1.67%, so it could take you hours or days to get one. Meanwhile, you can grab a Topney from the Snowman chest in like 30 minutes or so. But let's say all things are equal and you actually somehow score yourself a fabled Norfleet. Why is this launcher? launcher so good well it shoots out a ton of orbs that seem to obliterate the entire screen full of enemies for one thing and when paired with a sham shield you can do what is commonly known as sham fleeting this is a much maligned tactic that allows you to do crazy damage and keep your rocket ammo supply up non-stop the north fleet is a monster but obtaining it is a chore but it's a chore worth doing in my opinion Honorable mention. Before we get to number one, I want to mention some amazing weapons that just missed this list. The old rosy Thunderfire and Viber Pulse from Borderlands the Pre-Sequel, the Grease Trap Insider Trevenator, Kibsworth Beacon and DNA from Borderlands 3, and from Borderlands 1, the Rhino, the Crux, the Defiler, and the Volcano. All great weapons in their own right. Number one! 
Finally, at number one is the Plasma Coil from Borderlands 3. This SMG was introduced with Arms Race in the second season pass, and it is godly. Imagine a laser-focused Norfleet that uses SMG ammo, and you have the Plasma Coil. Frankly, this gun is just broken. It's like Evil Smasher glitch levels of broken. It's like the B in conference call in the early days of Borderlands 2 broken. You get this gun with any parts, any rolls, any anointment, and it's just going to trivialize everything. Seriously, start a brand new character and do the level 13 story skip then jump to arms race and hunt for this guy get one and extract it and you will use it all the way through the story and even somewhat into the mayhem levels it's that broken now if you want to make a case that the norfleet deserves this spot i legitimately will not argue with you it's also godly but it's much much harder to get than the plasma coil speaking of obtaining the plasma coil it can drop from these chests on the arms race map it can also spawn at vendors in arms race or from the final boss of arms race if you get lucky though you can even get it as a random drop from enemies in arms race or if you have a diamond key you might get really really lucky and get one in the diamond armory ultimately i feel like the plasma coil is arguably the strongest single weapon in the entire history of borderlands but let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to hit the like button hit subscribe for more and i will see you guys in the next one y'all take care